Good morning, my dear brethren. Welcome. Today, I want you to come with me to Psalm 103. It has 22 verses, the same number of, of uh, letters of the alphabet in Hebrew, but we're only going to read the first uh, 11 verses, but I hope that this, during the day that you will be able to read it all because it's really beautiful. Let's start with verse 1, Psalm 103, and the word of the Lord says, Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that you will your youth is renewed like the angels the Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed he made known his ways to Moses his acts to the children of Israel the Lord is merciful and gracious slow to anger and abounding in mercy he will not always strive with us nor will he keep his anger forever he has not dealt with us according to our sins nor punished us according to our iniquities for all, as the heavens as high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. Don't tell me that this is not a, an extraordinary psalm. The author, David, he makes, he forces his soul, his emotions, his feelings, his mood. He wants to take it so that it will submit itself to the will of God, so that it will bless the Lord. And what is to bless? To speak correctly, to speak well of somebody. Just the opposite, what is to curse somebody, which is to speak evil of somebody. What King David is doing here, and what is trying to show us and to teach us the Lord this morning through this beautiful psalm, is that we cannot allow ourselves to be dominated. We cannot be slaves of our emotions, of our feelings. I, may I remind you, although it's not part of Psalm 103, those words of the prophet Habakkuk that we know by heart, the just will live by faith alone. It is not that we can get excited about something. It's not that we can have uh, any kind of emotion or feeling. I haven't said that. But the life of the true believer, the life of a man and a woman of faith of God, it does not have to be controlled or dominated by its, her instinct, instincts, impulses, emotions, feelings, because they're variable. Today we feel one thing and tomorrow we feel another. There are people who begin to read the Bible hours and hours because they feel and they want to do it. But that does not work like that. When you feel like reading the Bible, when you feel like praying, when you feel like praising the Lord or go to church, then you do it. And when you don't have, you don't feel like that, then you don't do it. That's not the right way of how a person can grow and develop a child of God. To tell the soul, to that part of living part, bless the Lord, whether you want or not, bless the Lord, speak well, do not allow that attitudes and thoughts and words, do not allow that, that those things leave your lips that do not praise and glorify the Lord, complaining, regretting, whining, always blaming somebody, seeing the flaws of others and amplify them to justify ours or do not want to see our, ourselves. It's the worst, the worst favor that you can do to your Christian life, to your relationship with the Lord. Throughout the psalm, David, in various occasions, he expresses, uh, bless the Lord. He says, bless the Lord. Why? Because he knows how important it is to maintain a good attitude in front of God. And the best attitude that we can have in these times and the rest of our lives is to always thank the Lord for everything. And speak well of Him. Act well. Think well. Because our words are going to condition for better or for worse our lives. On several occasions, he uses the word bless. In fact, if you look at the psalm, it begins exactly as the way that it ends. 
David does not change his mind as he writes the psalm. He begins by saying, Bless or bless the Lord, O my soul, and bless all your, my, my whole being. And in the same thing, he says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. He's firm, he's serious in his posture of praising the Lord in any time, in any circumstances, in any problem or difficulty in which he finds himself. Some people have said that in several occasions in the Hebrew text it mentions the expression bless, bless my soul to the Lord because there are five different words in Hebrew that refer to the inner being or what we call the soul. One is nefesh or ruach and the other one neshama and the other one saya and the other one is yekida. When this um, Uh, uh, devotional is published in YouTube. In YouTube. This devotional, those Hebrew words will appear on the screen so that those who are taking notes can learn them. Either way, all human beings go through different states of mind. It has to do with what we're going through. It has to do with what they have told us, what we have done to us, and sometimes with the climate, with the age, so many circumstances that can affect our mood. We can be happy and sad, depressed, etc. But in all, at all times, circumstances and place, we have to maintain a good attitude and dispositions to force, if you allow me to say that, our soul, our feelings, our emotions, to our inner being to bend in front of the will of God, speaking well, blessing the Lord in all circumstances, times, and place. Unfortunately, there are believers that carry their, out their, li their whole life and they have not learned this. That is basic and fundamental, not to complain, not to murmur, not to be raising grief and compassion in others, always counting what they don't have, telling them others how bad they are, instead of doing what Psalm 103 says, bless, bless the Lord, all my soul, and say, don't forget, why do we forget? the benefits and the works and the miracles that the Lord has done and, con and does every day in our lives. We have read them. It says, you're the one who forgives all, all our iniquities. How many times we have said that non-condemnation in those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. He has forgiven all of our sins. It has, if it has been a genuine repentance, If there has been forgiveness from God is because we have asked forgiveness before and the Lord forgives and forgets he forgives all of our sins no matter how serious they are he, he is the God who heals he heals the soul he heals the mind he heals the body he heals each one of the areas of our lives he rescues us from the hole when we fall when we stumble he lifts us He shakes us. He gives us again the opportunity. Look in the case of Peter. He, ke he denied the Lord himself. But as soon as he confesses that he loves him, the Lord starts putting his trust in him. And then shepherd my sheep. He care for my people and feed my flock. He is the one who crowns us of favors, of mercies. He fills us with good. He rejuvenates us. In other words, The Lord is good and merciful. David also says in other few words the character of the, and the essence of God, saying that he's merciful, gracious, slow for anger, and great in mercy. David speaks like this because he knows God. He speaks like this with this freedom and this depth because he knows who he's praising, because who he's, he knows who he's serving. Do you know God? Have you given your life and your heart to him? Do you know what the character of God is like? There are some people that believe in God, but they have a very distorted uh, re uh, idea of what reality is, of what God does or doesn't do. God is merciful. He's good. He's gracious. He's a God of peace. He's a God of love. It is true, he's fair, and he does justice, but he's not going to allow sin. But above all things, now that we are his children, that we're in order, in obedience and in holiness, let's wait from God all that we need to live victorious, fruitful lives. 
that are blessed and abundant. We're not always waiting misfortunes and speaking negatively. It is interesting to note, and I have said before, that in Hebrew, you don't ask people, how are you doing? But, but you say, how is your peace? Mashalom. And that is what you have to ask yourself every morning. How is your peace? And my peace does not depend on your mood, of the weather, if it is cold, if it is hot. It does not depend on my finances. It does not depend on whether they applaud me uh, or they uh, criticize me. There is a lot of people who say they're praying for us and they're, uh, they have been blessed. But also we receive emails and words from people who insult us from people who say all kinds of tremendous things against us or me. But that does not have to affect us because we do not depend on the applause or the recognition of people, but from the support of our God. And we know that God is with us. And if God is with us, who can be against us? So therefore, let's not the circumstances, the illnesses, the problems, the children, the family, the marriage affect our mood and our relationship with the Lord. We have to be above all that. We have to know how to rise up spiritually and look at the Lord and not take off our eyes from him or lose our trust in him bless the Lord all my soul and bless all my whole being my words my thoughts everything that I have to do has to turn around around the Lord and it's a discipline and it's very it's, it's work and we but the Lord that dwells in us will give us the strength and the grace to be able to say thank you for the disease that I have been diagnosed with yes thank you for the pain that I feel thank you for my family maybe it's not as good as I would like them to be thank you for this circumstance for these problems and as soon as we begin to speak well to bless the Lord you will see the glory of the Lord in your lives doors will be open circumstances are going to change because this attitude of blessing the Lord of giving thanks to the Lord for everything open doors open huge doors makes miracles changes circumstances bring healing to our lives spiritually speaking so the, my dear brethren so why don't we just pray to the Lord and ask his blessing for this day that is just beginning let's pray to the Lord Heavenly Father thank you very much one more time my Lord for this wonderful privilege to start a new day with your in your presence thank you because your word motivates us inspires and encourages us and we want to bless you Lord from the fir first thing in the morning remove all negative words all the wrong attitude every thought that does not glorify you Lord in the name of Jesus take away all banality and carnality of us that we can bless the Lord with all our beings and with our all souls we put our lives in your hands and we give you thanks for everything because everything that you send us our way is good and forever is your, are your mercies. Bless your beloved church over all the earth and continue to save and protect us and use us in this hour of history in the name of your beloved son Jesus. Amen. And amen. Well, well, my dear brethren, you know, we have the rest of Psalm 103 to be read throughout the day. I hope that you do so and that, that it will be a tremendous blessing for all of you. And I know that it will be like that. Blessings to all of you and you have a happy day, my dear brethren.